Tell me what I want to hear, Dane. Oh, what? We're going. We've been going for a minute. Welcome back to She Ruined My Career. This is episode 19. Damn. We've been doing this 19 weeks in a row. I just got that joke. Somebody what? in the comments was like, I've been grooming this podcast and oh, finally 18. Oh, shit. 18 because it was the 18th oh, episode. Oh, my God. I had no idea. It just clicked. Shout out to the person in the comments who said that because I've passed by that comment probably a dozen times mm. now. Mm. Didn't really pay any attention. I was like, all right, cringe. Yeah, <laughs> but now the FBI I get it. is on their way. Yeah, no, I get it now, and you're valid. Very funny, yeah. very funny, very mm. valid. Mm. Sorry for ever thinking it was cringe. <laughs> so funny, <laughs> we love it. Uh, I did like it. Yeah, but episode nineteen is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I like, feel like that. Doesn't feel like we've been doing it that long. No, I don't. It feels it, like we've done about five. It doesn't even feel like I've been alive for nineteen weeks. Yeah, let alone made a podcast for nineteen Same. weeks. Is that traumatizing to think about how long you've been alive breathing? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just me. Okay. Uh, I want to start this podcast off by saying we have a Patreon Do where you we get ever you, an extra hour and a half every week. So it's like double the value mm -hmm. of what you're already getting. Uh, but you do have to pay for it's it. Another it's another podcast. It's another a whole nother podcast. We have all of our inside joke our best inside jokes are over there. We say some nasty shit. And we yeah, emphasis <laughs> on the nasty part of the We nasty call it the bog, shit. so that should say enough. Yeah. Um, but we talk about getting sued on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh Oh, short we talk about goblin short stacks over there as well. <laughs> we have we talked about goblin short stacks? I don't yet? think no. so. We will, uh, though. We'll get there. We'll get to it. Uh, okay. So with that out of the way. Tacoma is weeping because we haven't talked about it. <laughs> with that out of the way, I want to, on buds, I want to talk about some of the topics on the last podcast. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart. Now, uh, obviously, we're putting out shorts, TikToks, all that. And one of the things that was mentioned is that you sounded like Grimes. Some yeah. people were saying that you sounded like Grimes. I didn't like that. And Fact. I didn't hear it because I just I'm so focused on the Grimes lisp nowadays mm -hmm. that I'm not hearing the other qualities of Grimes's voice. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more of a personality thing. I think Anissa had a little bit of a, a little bit of one of these yeah, going my on. Yeah, nose was plugged because I was sick. Uh, that was obviously exaggerated, but uh it was that and I think the quality that people pegged was that you were enthusiastically talking about. Uh, a topic. I get very excited. How fucked up is that, right? No, I like, know, yeah. Just because you're enthusiastic <laughs> and not, like, trying to, like, contain yourself, it came as a little bit more... The sad thing about... Grimesy. Like... <laughs> Grimey. There is, there is no trying to contain myself. Mm -hmm. That's the saddest part. Yeah. I want to be contained and feminine and, well, <laughs> feminine in quotations. Yeah. But I, I literally can't. It's so... Not a pot. I tried for years. Oh, I I get it. I get it. I tried. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. never seen you like your version of like <laughs> hiding it or like I don't know what would the term would be. What what does putting on airs mean? Uh, that's uh, like being fancy or like ooh. being like uh, high class. I think. Right. Okay. Like holding yeah. your pinky finger up, like what Patrick right. does. <laughs> So, like, you can't put on airs. Mm. You can't do any of this shit. No. Uh, your best chance of doing that is just, like, not talking yes. at all. Yeah. Uh, which I think a lot of, like, women can relate to in that, you mm. know, with, given the circumstance. Um, <laughs> that's, how, think... that's how women behave, is that what you're saying? They just stop talking. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not exactly what I, I'm saying. Well, I will say that I think I look a lot cooler then I talk. Like, yeah. like when I start talking, uh -huh. I, I've had people in the past. Things come out. No, my face even. Just the uh -huh. way that, that I animate and right. move is uncool. Like, it's a little uncool. Yeah. And I, I when I was a. Well, it's a risk. It's always a risk. It's the whole reason that I mentioned, uh, like, not talking, period. No, it's true. Because if you're like, in any of these scenarios, the safest thing to do is to not talk. Even when I was doing titty streaming uh -huh. and there was, like, this one guy, something gamer, who would, like, make videos about me specifically. And his biggest insult that he, like, uh, was, like, dying on was, yeah, 
once you see her talk and her teeth, you'll stop watching and like <laughs> zoom it in on my mouth. And, it, and I think what it is, because I do have unique teeth, but I think more so what it is, is the way my mouth moves and the uh -huh. way I talk is different. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to put it. It's different. Yeah. And I, I do think there are people out there that look at me and, and they were like, it, it's just, you yeah. know. I like your mouth. Thank you. I think yeah. it is one of those things you either really like or you really don't like. Yeah, yeah. You got a purdy mouth. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, are you are you saying she got a purdy mouth? Or? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't say but that. that's what you were in mind. Swear to God, I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's polarizing. You either really like it or you really yeah don't like it. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not for everybody. <laughs> I'm not for everybody. Uh. On the same topic, someone says, I love how Anissa goes into an interview being a fan and knowing their guests so well. That made me really happy. That, that like, cranked yeah. up my self-esteem. Two points. There were a few comments uh, echoing that. Because, obviously, you have some enthusiasm because our guest is not only someone that you admire because of the content they're making, mm -hmm. but you also, like, grew up. In the same, you went to the same, what was it? Same high school? Same junior high and high school. Junior high and high school. I don't think we made that clear on the last podcast. True. Our guest was Adam, Your Movie Sucks, mm -hmm. Reviews Movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to the same high school, middle school. Yeah. We grew up five minutes away from each other. So pretty much culturally as close as mm -hmm. you can get. And I think we both struggled with similar things yeah um which at the time he was such a life raft for me and i i didn't understand why until like even just talking to him like last week where i was like oh we were just both the same we were on the same wavelength and we were trying to just like swim through mm. the edmonton reality <laughs> the edmonton reality <laughs> edmonton loves the oilers tobogganing and they don't what is tobogganing what is that like uh bobsled <laughs> What? Wait. I don't know what a toboggan really is. I mean, it sounds like a sled, right? Yeah. yeah I know Dr. Mantis toboggan. I know him. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell are you saying? Wait. So what do you call... So when you go down a hill on your GTX racer or like the, the things on the snow... The chair? The So like a sled? Sled. You mean like a sled? Sledding? Sledding. I think we just call it sledding. <laughs> I think <laughs> maybe you're just... <laughs> Calling it a toboggan? We you, call it tobogganing. <laughs> you kind of tilted your head and had a quality of born yesterday kind of meme. You were like, sledding? <laughs> you call it sledding? Uh, never, yeah, we call it sledding. Okay, tobogganing, <laughs> sledding. <laughs> toboggan, look at that. Toboggan. There it is. Do, you never got on... <laughs> Sorry, no, just, that I, is like that is what you avoid getting on because it's gonna hurt you. That ha that hung up in my parents' garage my whole life. Yeah, that that was like I don't know uh, when decorating homes in a l cabin in the woods. <laughs> maybe someone, an interior designer, would hang that on a wall to make it seem but like an ancient time. Toboggans are the it's a blanket term for any sled sled so like the gtx racers those like little sleds that mm. you'd sit on and like turn yeah. we would call that tobogganing too are you thinking of the gaming chair because you keep <laughs> saying dx racer <laughs> yeah gtrx did i is GTRX? this is there a brand of toboggan that's like a gamer or like a <laughs> maybe super... i'm not hearing you wait, i wait. think i was just hearing dx racer but GTRX you were rx racer can you type that in gtrx yeah gtrx racer GTRX Racer. <laughs> oh, that's a car. This is a car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, type in type in GTX sled. Did you mean that? Oh, maybe. Oh, GTRX is that? Uh, now yeah, I don't know. Right, it's like a see. sled. It's usually green and black. And I think this is the closest. No, thing. that's Jet not skis. it. Wait, wait. Cool. Go down to the one with the bar, the green bars. And it's covered in something. This? No. Go. Yeah. Oh, no. Go back. It's got green bars. Do you see it? No. Go back. I know what you're, that one. Oh. The, no. Oh. You're, oh, this. Yeah. There you go. This green bars. Cover. This is a covered Never one. Mind. And that's yeah. yellow. What? That's Am I on crack? It's chartreuse. Okay. It is chartreuse. Either or. <laughs> that's no. yellow. Never mind. That's okay. more yellow. I don't know. Somebody in, in the comments will say. Right. It's basically like a little <laughs> snowmobile that isn't mm -hmm. powered. And it's uh, green and black and like all I the... I know what you're talking yeah, about. I don't know what that's called I get, anymore. Okay. I used to know, but my but brain... It actually had a proper seat. Yeah. 
And a steering wheel. And that is cool. Okay. I've seen those before. Yeah. And you'd still use the same term like I'm going tobogganing. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Man. Okay. I remember having the sickest toboggan Mm. when I was a child. It kind of sucks I didn't get to go sledding too often. I only did it like a, I don't know, like two or three times. Where would you go sledding in California? Oh, Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain. Mountain. They have sledding in Bear Mountain? Yeah, of course. Of course. It's a fucking mountain. It's where everyone goes to ski and snowboard and everything. What? Why would you sled where you ski and snowboard? I mean, I guess- that's where the snow is. Well, for you, you go to a hill. You, you just go to any <laughs> what old are you hill. What talking about? We have to go to the mountains. That's you, the only wait, place the snow is. That, did you get on the chairlift and like go up with your no, sled? No, no. They have, I think they have, on your way up the mountain, mm-hmm. I would say like it-, it it gets more advanced. Mm. Like, obviously, when you get to the top of the mountain, that's where all the skiers, snowboarders, and trick doers are at. Right. So you just walk up the hill with your sled. Not up the hill. Oh. You would go ha- halfway up the mountain, and then there would be, like, oh. some flatter areas that are a little bit more, like, I, they have different is, names. Is this it? Oh. That's not it. Uh, oh, the one The red with... one and the green one. Down. See that? The kid sitting on it? Yeah, the kid sitting one, on it. That, that one, one is. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you this go. This is a DRX racer. Fuck, it's a DRX race. No, no, sorry, I was oh. making that up. Um, what? <laughs> Don't do that to me. I, <laughs> they just called a steerable ski I just slide. typed in steerable toboggan and this yeah. came up. So. Yeah, that kid is sporting it. Um, But I remember the one that I had Expensive. was like plastic, low to the ground. Didn't have a cool seat like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But it had these two like things on either side of mm-hmm. you that you can pull yeah, yeah, yeah. and like slow down, but you could also use it to steer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that shit was sick. I yeah. just, do either of you get the urge to kick this kid off of this? Like I get the kick, urge to kick Like walk up to time. him, walk up to him and kick him? Yeah, only because so fall he's over. too old for it. <laughs> too big for it. Do you, right. would, if a teenager came trick-or-treating at your door, would it make you angry? A teenager? Yeah. No. No. No, no, no. But that makes you angry. That yeah. child. No, this yeah, is a teenager trick or treating is vulnerable. Like, you gotta, like, be. That child's vulnerable. He's, like, in potty squatty position. I don't think this kid is. No, no, I, I totally too old for it. There's a How's completely he too old? different vibe on, on like, uh, uh, vehicles or things, like a skateboard or a scooter or a bike. <laughs> like, because that's the what bullies, nature. that's what the older people do and the bullies out there, mm-hmm. they'll fucking grab the little kid's <laughs> scooter and they'll ride around the skate park. So you're envisioning that this kid is a bully. Yeah, he's a bully. Okay, I thought maybe it was a bionic aspect, like, because it was like- Man, we're getting so- used. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I'm We're kidding. getting so hung up no, on this. Yeah. What makes Anyways. this, I mean, I just want to say, what makes me say that I want to kick him it has nothing to do with his character. Mm-hmm. It's just funny. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's just, it would be funny to, to see someone walk up to a kid doing this dorky thing, because this kind of looks like a dorky thing. I think that's probably Man. the root of it. Oh. The coolest kids were on that shit, and they were going off of, like, uh, ramps and stuff, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this thing. It just looks dorky. Anyways, yeah. Edmonton loves tobogganing, sports, and alcohol. Right. And uh, and you two, you and uh, Adam. We loved... Um, you grew up in that environment. Yeah, we loved not that. And, uh, and what is the word? Flew the coop. We flew the coop. I will say the something nest. really quick, uh, just in reference to Dane, like thinking it's funny to like kick a kid <laughs> off. Of, uh, <laughs> you were like talking about how we like veered off and then we're yeah, trying know, to I get just, back. I need to bring it up. Really okay. Quick. I just, it's important. <laughs> Dane thinking it's funny to kick a kid like this off of uh, a little sled mm-hmm. um, <laughs> because it's funny. Mm-hmm. Is a very Dane thing. I've realized a lot of Dane incentives are like, if it would make him laugh. Yeah, it reminds he, me of that story that. you told me about. Um, I like to laugh. What, what's how the to crime? Basic, <laughs> the how-to basic mm-hmm. story where it was just him and another person in the car holding drinks, and he slammed on the brakes. Chad, Chad, he slammed <laughs> on the brakes so the drinks would go all over Chad. There was no audience. Yeah. It was just for how-to basic. Mm-hmm. He just. <laughs> yeah. 
funny. What's a better audience than yourself? Ah, uh, dude, that's, that's such rough. a Danism. Yeah, What's that is. What's a better audience than yourself? Yeah, all the all the stories that we tell are like, what do you would you do in that situation, Dane? And his answer is always, oh, I'd laugh. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like the most fucked up yeah. situation. It's like, what would you do if like somebody on <laughs> yeah. the subway is getting actively stabbed? And Dane's like, oh, I'd laugh. That would be <laughs> no. not stabbed, but like yelled at. Yeah, yeah. What what would you do if Donald Trump came over and twisted both your nipples really hard? <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be a great story. I <laughs> you mean, wouldn't laugh? Not at the time. Okay. I, th- I would be confused, I think. Mostly confused. And in pain. <laughs> to be honest, I would laugh at that. Yeah. I, I, would la- I would laugh at it like pretty soon after. Mm-hmm. But not in the moment because I think I would just be confused. Okay. I have a problem where I laugh when I'm really scared. I laugh. Yeah. So yeah. if, if Trump came up and like viciously twisted your nipples, I would laugh out of fear. I think. Yeah, I think I have that too. I think I have the like nervous laughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which makes it so that I find things that should make me upset funny mm-hmm. on Trauma accident. Response. Yeah. Mm. But would you say it's like it comes across as like authentic when you're laughing in those situations? <laughs> yeah. Authentic. I, 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 it's like. A response in order to make me feel better about the situation. So, yeah, I do feel better. Mm. Yeah, I feel bad for you because if you ever get investigated, if somebody around you gets murdered, I think you might be one of those people where they're like, something was off with that guy. No, I I don't know. I I don't think that I'm inappropriate Mm. with it. I'm inappropriate with it because I I don't know how to – I think it's just the way that my life has gone. I got a – I've learned to like – laugh things off <laughs> i can lock in if I need can. be and the more scared i am the more i'm gonna laugh <laughs> so <laughs> don't get murdered or else i'm definitely gonna look sus hey, you know what i'll i'll try i'll i'll give it my best shot not okay. to get murdered yeah what are you what's uh <laughs> oh max just sent me a couple photos of uh susan <laughs> Susan Wojcicki? No, not not Wojcicki. <laughs> oh. It's like lurk photos of Susan oh, working at her computer from like a window. <laughs> she doesn't work at YouTube anymore. Why is he still care? Oh, she doesn't? No, uh-huh. she she stepped down as a CEO a long time AI ago. AI guy. There's an AI guy. Oh, right, yeah, right. yeah. Immediately after he became CEO, he like introduced that. a bunch of like uh, cringe shit, but mm-hmm. he's like less um, uh, public figure than she is, I guess. And gotcha. also less of a woman. Mm. That definitely helps. Less of a woman. <laughs> mm. uh, okay, a couple more ombudsing comments. We don't have too many more. Uh, but this one I thought was funny. Someone said, uh, this is <laughs> quoting me from the episode with Adam, The Boys on Netflix. <laughs> Uh, that's what I said. I said the boys on Netflix. Completely unironically. I wasn't making a joke there. Uh, I, I genuinely thought I was saying... Amazon or that they were the same thing or whatever. The boys on ne- I yeah. don't know. I don't uh, know why. Yeah, they said the boys on Netflix from Ian almost made me drive a stake <laughs> through my brain. Jesus fucking Christ, that hurts. I what? don't know why that Im- oh. when you said that I thought of uh, Nicolas Cage from the fucking vampire, <laughs> the ending scene. Oh, uh, I haven't seen that one. I, um, when you said that just now, it literally took me about five seconds to understand exactly why they thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. Right. I thought it was funny because saying the full name, the boys on Netflix <laughs> is very strange. Even if it, okay, even if it was on Netflix, because now I get right. the joke that it's not on Netflix, it's on Amazon. Still saying like if you were to say like Stranger Things on Netflix <laughs> As the, as the full name every time you refer to the show is very funny. Yeah. I honestly think it's the layers. Like, there's a couple of layers uh-huh. to it that make it funny. I think <laughs> if it was missing either one of those things, it wouldn't have been. I also think what makes this comment in particular funny is they didn't say that it was funny. They yeah. said it makes their brain... It makes them want to drive a stake through their brain and that it hurts to hear that. That is accurate, though. Sometimes I remember... I think it was, like, Joe Rogan on a podcast was, like, talking about hunting bears in Alberta and he just gave like a wrong like an outright wrong right. fact <laughs> and it made me so unreasonably angry. angry yeah man this is another dane ism <laughs> thinking that wrong things are funny yeah you do love so, <laughs> yeah misinform you love spreading misinformation on well the not internet. spreading it it's just like <laughs> confidently saying wrong things is yeah. very funny to me which is why anisa you are so funny to me <laughs> what the hell <laughs> 
Because you, it's because earlier, literally, literally, like five minutes ago, you were very confidently calling the fucking sled a DX racer or something. And, <laughs> okay. I think I called it a GTRX. <laughs> yeah, and it was, and we brought it up, and it was a fucking <laughs> sports nothing. car. Yeah, and it's very funny. I, I don't it's think it's a wave it's, runner and a sports car. Yeah, it's like it's everything like... except for a sled. <laughs> it's so funny to me. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, um, I like it when people misattribute like one of the best jokes from the office for example is when michael scott drives up in his car and he's listening to lady gaga and he says it's britney bitch <laughs> like just being so confidently wrong yeah. i do like yeah is uh yeah it's very fun it's just kind of sad for me because it's definitely not intentional no but oh, yeah I, but that's fine i mean when it's so when it's sold <laughs> the best it's it is not intentional. i'm i'm i feel like i'm very confidently wrong a lot as well like I just don't get called out for it. My favorite <laughs> immediately. My favorite um thing that has ever happened in our real life that has been so funny that I think about it very often is um Aristotle Fatty when we were filming the hot seat and he oh, fucking yeah. said the uh <laughs> Yeah, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> the Avril Lavigne, he was talking about how hot Avril Lavigne was, and then he said, like, she could bring me back to life or whatever the <laughs> Yeah, he said, he bring said, me to life, baby. Bring me to life. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> That was that was like you can't write that no, like you that can't. that is well no. I'm saying that that was sounds like something that was written for a show yeah. but he just said it yeah. it's so funny I will say like a lot of these things are super dependent on like your level of knowledge clearly true like <laughs> the, I would have not known how funny that line was because mm. I don't know I know Avril oh, Lavigne is skater boy yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like all. That's all I know. Really? I know nothing. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. Bring me to life. Well, let me bring up the speech. Wait, he was Levine a skater boy. Avril Lavigne did not say. No, I mean the Evanescence one. Oh, okay. oh that's yeah. who it was, right? Evanescence is bring me to life. Yeah. But he was talking about wanting to Avril Lavigne her over <laughs> yeah. on the yeah. bed or <laughs> He was all over the map with it. He kept yeah. bouncing, oscillating between yeah. the two. Yeah. Evanescence yeah. is... Uh... But I wouldn't have figured it out is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So as no, far okay. as I know, I would have been like, oh, yeah, sure. Cool. That's a good pun. <laughs> that's a good pun. Or, yeah, something like that. Well, that's why whenever you said uh, The Boys on Netflix, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't register it yeah. fully as the comedic uh, masterpiece that it is. I yeah. actually also really like it because neither me, you, or Adam in that moment picked up uh, on it, yeah. which makes it even funnier. Mm -hmm. Because he was, the, the viewer was probably watching it, and no one flinched, and he was probably like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know why? It's because he said it confidently, yeah. and that just blows over everybody questioning it. They're like, oh yeah, on Netflix. I, next time I have like a game or something like that, yeah. I'm going to intentionally throw in a couple of those... Uh, <laughs> uh, information. Yeah, to see if I can like sell it as confidence. Yeah, well, it's very fun to try and get away with it. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's definitely my biggest problem and weakness is I I sound so confident, uh, not intentionally, mm -hmm. that like anything I say, I think I it holds a bit more weight because of the way it I, sounds. Just your cadence. Well, sometimes I lie awake at night and I wonder how many wrong things I've just said to people mm -hmm. that like in the moment they were like, yeah. And then later they like, like oh, I had this really bad one the other day where um, I kept saying congruent viewers to some, to like a... <laughs> business person yeah. a twitch person and i kept saying like oh my congruent numbers uh are that hurts that hurts <laughs> so much and it's concurrent right Con isn't it concurrent numbers? what are you re it what's depends on what you're referring to yeah, like, what's the context your average numbers or whatever like what you usually are, have viewer like viewer, oh, viewers at the, like same at, time. The same time. at the same time concurrent yeah concurrent. Concurrent. I'm pretty sure i was saying congruent yeah i mean what are you gonna do <laughs> close enough no and they they, they like, get it. They were like, what's the word? And I was like, congruent. <laughs> <laughs> they even, they even gave like you a nodding chance. your head. <laughs> oh, I love that. They give you a chance to like correct yourself and you're like, no, that's they it. Probably I accidentally gaslight people all the time because they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that is painful. That is really painful. I was thinking about that like for like literally an hour last yeah. night with my eyes like closed. But mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> just know that like. I love calling you out on that stuff in the you moment. Do. Yeah. So just know that 
just feel comfortable knowing that having gotten me as a partner. It doesn't like, fix it. It doesn't fix it, uh, but like I have it reels disease. it in a little bit. I don't know. I have I a think you'd be I think with a different reality. I think you'd be unchained, and I, I think, think you'd be spreading misinformation way more. <laughs> when you let me off of my leash uh -huh. and you're not around, yeah. it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Everywhere. You yeah. don't know it's happening. Yeah, okay. But when I'm, when I'm around you... <laughs> you're like deviously... <laughs> like, <laughs> let like, me spread misinformation hmm. at the coffee shop. <laughs> I want to try out some new words today that sound smart, congruent. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like your gungruian word that you love yeah, yeah. so much. Gungruian. Gungruian. Yeah. Does that is that a word? No, it's nah, from it's the pronunciation uh, of uh Nguyen or win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, win. Yeah. How to pronounce win, which is a common uh Vietnamese, Vietnamese last, last name. name. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. But um it's like spelt like N G Y u e n i think or something yeah. close to that I like pronouncing is like uh, yeah or something like that <laughs> and uh so so there's like it's a very popular thing that people google to see like how to pronounce it so this person uploaded a video where it's it a just, pronunciation manual the one that pr uh, yeah it's like the how to basic version of yeah. pronunciation yeah. Manual, yeah and it says like nguyen or yeah nguyen whatever it says, it says the word it says the word and then he just goes Gungruyen. Yeah. <laughs> Gungruyen. <laughs> uh, See, yeah. this is all related to Spreading my theory. My theory that it is funny to be confidently wrong, and and whenever you have an entire channel where you're like officially <laughs> setting up, like I've had um, this fantasy of of making an entire channel called like movie movie clips or something. <laughs> You should do it. You, you should. You know exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah. I where describe it. Where it's I I upload movie clips but I change one thing about it that is like noticeably wrong about the scene. Mm. Uh but don't lead on that it's like different at all. Is that what you're thinking that I was going to say? Not exactly. What's your idea cuz I am curious what your My version idea of this would is, be. Is more so uh like Doing a, a, like a full movie review or something and just like filling in the blanks of some of, like of the actors. scenes that oh. you aren't showing. <laughs> right. It's like, I don't know, you. What, what would be like a good example of that? I don't know, in the fucking Goofy movie or whatever, you know, you, you basically describe it how you uh, almost remember it from like 13 years ago when you had watched it. Mm. Like tons of bad information, but it's like oh. roughly right. <laughs> Um, right, a you're saying like a movie review where I detail the plot. Lying. I detail the plot, but it's wrong. Yeah, slightly off. Yeah. Well, that's why <laughs> I like like the funniest shit Dax makes is like when he's like talking about things that are just like factually not true, or he like lies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then like he uploads like a video like a yeah. day later, and he's like, sorry. I, "I'm sorry, I lied. I lied. <laughs> sorry, I lied." It's such a consistent <laughs> thing yeah. for him. I don't really like it. Yeah, I love those. Um. But yeah, I like that one as well. I think yeah. Well, it's because like when people are like, "Oh, I want to look up that movie clip of like the Wolf of Wall Street uh, guy making a speech," but then like make his speech like slightly like higher pitched or something. Mm. <laughs> like so, I don't know. Just yeah. like just do clever little things that'll that'll like make people question. Like, do I did I remember this scene wrong? Right. Like, what's going on? Oh, do the King's speech, but make him stutter a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stuttered during his speech, so it's like he had no, he had no like arc. Yeah, there's he just no. Still fucked up yeah. at the end. It's like a reverse Mandela effect type thing, or it's like inconsequential, and people don't think. No one thinks it was the version that you created. No, <laughs> they think it's something else, but they question it. Right. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Um, I made something like that once for Twitter. No one cared that I posted it because it's there will be blood meme, but mm -hmm. there's a part in there will be blood where uh, they're referring to an oil Derek, but I just took the word Derek and I just made every character say that their, their name was Derek. <laughs> 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 and that was all I did. And it was so funny to me. I like that. I'm sorry. Nobody saw the vision on Twitter. Yeah. Well, like I, I think I brought this up before. Whenever you have like a, a niche, yeah. uh, no one cares if you, have anything outside that niche yeah so it's that not tf2 sense. no one gives a shit 
Um, someone on the last podcast said, Mics sound different. Is it just me? Or did something get changed with the guest setup? No. Your nose was true. Huh? Oh, I thought, you were gonna, I thought you were going to say, no, there was nothing I, wrong with it. I know. I was you're like, crazy a, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lighting them. It's not just you. It was many people. Uh, yeah, we just, I think we got a, oh, did you get the other mic, Dane? Yeah, I have it. I, using I'm using it, it right now. I use nice. it for the bog, too. Okay. And honestly, I don't know if you listened to the bog, but I think it sounded really good. Oh, oh. sweet. Like, everything's fixed now. Like, I think for a, a couple weeks, people have been saying, like, oh, Dane's mic is really loud. I don't know what's going on. The mixer was broken. I, I By the way, I'm not, like, a professional producer or anything. I'm just mm -hmm. winging all this. So if there's problems, you can blame it on me. But I am very new to this. Mm -hmm. um, but Bring as we go. We got a new mic for the guest and then when we plugged that mic in it was like set up wrong or something mm -hmm. um but the guest luckily wasn't using the shit mic it was it was ian yeah so ian was using a shit mic for that episode so he's a little crispy a little crispy he's a little crispy i like but that. i mean it's not unbearable it's just mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yeah and also uh you know spare dane some sympathy he is not like uh some big big time producer guy he's closer to like uh, an unpaid intern mm -hmm. uh, who's got another job that he's working on the side. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. Just think about that for a moment. Yeah. Before you type something heinous. Yeah. No, you guys can hate on me. I Like I've said in the episode before, I my haters fuel me. They motivate me. So yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Just don't make fun of my glasses. Oh, <laughs> rule number one of attracting haters, Dane. <laughs> Don't it, like let them know what you're. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. Uh, <laughs> another comment was, I cannot believe you guys managed to get YMS on before H3 did. They've been puzzled about furries for years. Ah, ha ha ha. I didn't know that they were puzzled about furries. Yeah, I don't think they're they're an interesting a uh, group of people over there at the H3 podcast. I think one of them's a furry secretly. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Do you want to take a guess on who's a furry? Who's a furry in that tribe? Yeah. Mm. Just that I, I, it's just my feeling. I think it's Greg. Who's Greg? I don't know. I was just kind of hoping one of them was named Greg. Uh, I don't know very well, much. One of, the, one of the dudes. Uh, mm. For me, I'm thinking Zach or Dan. Zach. Zach. I have a... I have a feeling. He's oh wait, one of us. Wait, <laughs> no, just kidding. what is that fucked up though? Did you like? Would you? Th is that you outing him? No, it's just a vibe. It's just a guess. I think Sam would be a cat furry. She okay, would be a cat. Mm -hmm. Zach would be a wolverine. No, I think Zach would be a horse. I think like Zach would be a wolverine. Really? Yeah. I think he'd be a horse. Not like everyone with long hair is a horse, babe. That's true. But Maine. I'm not you know? a horse. Let's give them all fursonas. I'm going to give them all fursonas. Uh, I'm think... an iguana. <laughs> no, you're a hawk. I'm in the iguana. <laughs> can, we gonna... can we clip Ian very, like, dead face saying, I'm not a horse. <laughs> I'm not a horse. Yeah, we could do that. Froggy, fucking send it. <laughs> okay, uh, I had an idea. Oh, fuck. I should have prepared the voicemails. Oh, well, uh, that'll be next time. This is uh, iDub's dating advice segment. Ooh. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I'm giving the people what they want. They've been asking for it for weeks. Really? <laughs> yeah. Dating advice? Yes. Where? Everyone's been asking for dating advice really? on the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're like, oh, you bagged a cool one. Tell me how. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't believe uh -huh. that. I don't that's more like, that's more like bagging that. advice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to give you guys some bagging advice. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I heard this uh, piece of advice. First, it started as like a uh, advice on like how to like uh, how to decide on what home you should buy to get like a lot of value in a home. Mm -hmm. And this one guy was describing it on TikTok is like, I fucking, I love trains. So I would buy a house near some train tracks. And for me, that would be awesome and wouldn't bother me and my lifestyle at all. Meanwhile, everyone else on the market in the scene, 
they would be like, oh, I'm not going to buy this house because I'm afraid that will the train will wake me up or it'll be disturbing or something about it. Apply that logic to the dating world. Uh, when you're looking for a potential partner, you can, I'm not saying you should, you know, apply this universally, but you can say, oh, like for me, I'm like, I don't mind any hair length on you. You could be bald. Mm -hmm. Your hair could be down to the floor. Mm -hmm. Any hairstyle, as far as I know, I can, I'm can. i racking my brain through all the different like options of hairstyles. And I'm like, yeah, they're all fine. I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of opens you up for like a lot more options that, you know, you didn't necessarily consider. I also, I'm realizing that I'm caring less about body hair, mm. like uh, women with like armpit hair or... I think that's my fault. Arm hair. Like four years ago, I just stopped shaving as often. <laughs> and I think that, you've just had to get used to no, it. No, that's not true. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You I shave all the time. No, I only shave when I'm doing OnlyFans. No, I think your your perception of like what is shaven and what is not shaven mm. is different. Okay. Because you can get like a little stubble and you're like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm Sasquatch or whatever. <laughs> what? That's not true. No. To but, the untrained eye, I'm like, yeah, it's fucking, that's a naked leg. No, I won't shave for like three weeks on my armpits sometimes. Sometimes I look down, I'm like, Whoa. Yeah, the armpits, I don't even fucking care about, though. I know. Like, you, why does anyone care about that? It's, They're I, just the fucking under your arm. No, like, I know, Unless I agree. someone's like sexually attracted to armpits, I don't get the... Which, by the way, I uploaded a picture of me yesterday where my arm was up, and someone did in the comments say, yes, armpit. <laughs> so they, they do exist yes. yes uh so okay so uh, body hair what so, about like height like maybe you're a guy who yeah. doesn't mind tall women yes you could beg a i'm also in that guy. category i don't yeah. care how tall you are yeah i mean although i haven't been with anyone who's taller than me mm, it's very hard to be taller than you as a woman yeah but i don't know seems interesting yeah. wait um i have a question why is it hard for a woman to be taller than the man? What for him? Well, because he's no, no, no. Good. What you just said, you said it's very hard for a woman to be taller than the man. No, I said taller than you, him specifically. Huh? Oh, it's very, very rare. It's hard for a woman to be taller than him. <laughs> it would be difficult to find a woman. Oh, rare, rare, rare. Bro, well, uh, when you say hard, yeah. uh, 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 I thought it was like. Difficult. It was more poetic language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing, Sorry, though, I, I just misinterpreted what you said. It's it's difficult to find a woman out there that yeah, yeah. is to find taller than Got you. It. You're six foot one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's not a lot of women. That no, are you're right. It is rare. Yeah. I thought you were. My it's, bad. It's hard to date someone. No, no. <laughs> Dane was right. <laughs> you, you keep. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I think like he, saying it that way. No, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. It's yeah. just that you understand that that's why I was confused, right? Yeah. yeah. Why yeah, do yeah. you like saying it that way instead of hard to find someone? Because that gives you all the information that you need. I don't know. I feel like. It sounds better to me. Oh. It sounds. <laughs> Scratches your brain in the right way? Yeah. Right, right. Okay. okay. I don't know why. Um, I'm stubborn about it, though. I don't want to change it. No, <laughs> no, you don't have to. I was just <laughs> I was just trying to clear up why I put words in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, but uh, find what I'm saying is if you're trying to find that special someone, Find some things that you can stand about people or that you like in people or that you don't have, you know, that other people find like super important uh, that you don't. Mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, apply that in your dating world. I'm not saying, you know, intentionally like lower your standards or not care about certain things. Like, what are you going to do? We're all raised in the same kind of world. Mm -hmm. I wasn't always this way. There was a time in my life where I think I would care a lot more about a hairstyle, not so much anymore. Right. Why did that change? Um, I think just because it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't know. There's aspects of like, I think particularly like sexuality, like it doesn't, I've realized that that just isn't a component to like getting me off is the idea that someone has long hair mm. or naked armpits mm. or anything like that. I'm like, yeah. I can fucking cross these things off a list for sure. Yeah. Like, it's not important. What 
What is needed to get you off? Oh, well, let me go down this list. <laughs> yeah, for everything that you've crossed off your I don't care list, you have uh, an even longer list of specificities. Yeah, because I'm, I'm curious. I feel like. One, <laughs> childbearing ips. Childbearing ips. Childbearing ips. That's a gross gore reference when he <laughs> ate Pokey Mane. He made this video where he was like talking about her childbearing hips. Oh my God. <laughs> fucked up. So fucked up. Childbearing ips. Um, yeah. But not entire. I mean, fucked up. Yeah. How much? Yeah, that was 70% a joke. No, yeah. no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're saying yeah especially that way of phrasing it it's like bro you could just say big hips. yeah, I, yeah. Know, it's so weird um, I want to mate with this woman uh, uh, historically I found that I like breasts that's true historically yeah historically uh, <laughs> that's true you do like breasts uh, cause I <laughs> I got a basis on my own history no, who no, knows what this I'm sorry. looks like I historically just saying that is vague enough uh -huh. to be not specific. Everybody likes breasts. He likes what the hell? Be, no, no. Are you going to be specific about it? Because big undulating breasts. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's big, what we was asking for. He likes really big curvy right. women. Period. Okay. You like curvy women. I don't mind meat on the bone. Yeah. And yeah, enough said. Yeah. Enough said. Yeah. You like curvy women, which is also Enough said. <laughs> partially why, like, the implants were, like, such a no-brainer. Because mm -hmm. that's, like, what you were I was like, sure. into. Yeah. The bigger, the bigger the breast, the... But <laughs> during this, I mean, like, uh, the reason I said historically as well mm -hmm. is because even something like that, I've, like, been like, oh, this doesn't make too much of a difference to me. And that could be because I, I found love. it. And I found marriage and I found the person that like maybe I do relate to the worm thing now where I'm yeah. like, oh, would you still love me if I was a worm? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I also I also think that like you had you I was I had a smaller I was still a big chest, but I had a smaller chest. Then I got implants mm -hmm. and it I don't think it changed much for you. Mm -hmm. True. Like, like you you True. had it. It was like the grass is greener where it's like, right. oh, this actually is not different mm -hmm. enough. Um, so then when I – it was like a no-brainer when I was really uncomfortable with them to take them out because you were like, oh, I actually don't yeah. care as much as I – like visually it's more – Yes, and I will say specifically for me, I got to this point where I was like, I really care about how you feel. Mm. About the situation. Yeah. And like with the amount that you did not like and how uncomfortable yeah. having implants made you feel. Yeah. Just all the time in a variety of different ways. I was like, this is like uncomfortable not and not fun for me. Yeah. Like I'm not, this isn't doing anything. Yeah. Like I so much, uh, it makes me so much happier to see you happy mm -hmm. and like whatever the, you know. Whatever needs to be done in that case to remedy it, I'm, like, all for. Yeah, it's interesting. The way that you're talking about your sexual attraction for me is very similar to what a lot of, like, women talk about with their sexual attraction with their partner, where it's kind of like, yeah, if you're happy and comfortable, like, you at your base, I like. It doesn't matter, like, where you kind of end up. Like, mm -hmm. I'll always be attracted to you. Whereas, like, I think a lot of young, I'll, I'll say young men, and men that have not found love and haven't been, like, taught the tools. Right. Uh, they are less likely to understand that concept. Mm -hmm. That, like, it's the – if you're interested in the core, it's kind of like if you like pizza, you're going to like pizza if it has pepperoni on it. Right. You're going to like pizza if it has, like, you know, mm -hmm. white sauce on it. Like, you're a pizza person. Yeah. So, like, I'm an Ian person. If you have a mullet – Cool. If you have a shaved head, cool. You get fat, cool. Skinnier, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an Ian person. So, and I, I think, hear the comments right now. Cope, cope. <laughs> but I think it's the same thing with you where it's like you're a me person and you found because I fluctuated so much totally. that it's like, oh, it's the core. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen yeah. the other side. I've seen you in so many different forms. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you without tattoos, mm -hmm. with tattoos, mm -hmm. like none of that really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will say, I think this is an interesting segue into saying that we recently watched 
poor things. Yeah. Uh, and so I kind of want to segue into something in that film where I'm like, like this was a realization for me later in life. Mm. Um, uh, and I, I think it's good to talk about on the podcast because I think it is, I think it's relatable to some extent. There's this scene, spoiler alert, we're talking about the movie. Yeah. So if you don't want to know. It's a very good movie. Yeah. Skip the timestamp. Um, but there was a scene in the movie where Emma Stone was like, don't you, uh, don't like, you want to. Because she was in a brothel. Yeah. And she was like, don't you want to have, like, uh, sex with someone who wants to have sex with you, mm -hmm. who's enthusiastic about it? Like, mm -hmm. isn't that meaningful? Doesn't it... Like, make it better? Make it better? Yeah. And, of course, the owner of the brothel was like, you know, some people like it sucking for you yeah. and it not being fun for you. Yeah. And this was a concept that was never in my head I at know. all. I know. That's nothing that I ever thought myself. I always thought the most attractive thing was someone who wanted you and wanted to have sex with you enthusiastically. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons I made this video back in the day called, uh, it was called R Word Quiz. Yeah. Um, and basically I was kind of mocking this little... Uh, quiz type thing that they uh, were sending out, I think, to certain like colleges mm -hmm. because there was like a, a rape culture kind of thing that needed to be addressed. And I, I re regret making that video because I did not understand that I kind of projected myself and my own beliefs onto other men and other men don't collectively think this way. There are plenty of men with problems That's <laughs> in like, that way. I, I do. So not all, not all men, not all men, not all men, not all men, not all men. But <laughs> I will say that you out of the partners that I've had in my lifetime are extremely unique. And I don't know if that says something about me, probably does. Um, but I it, it shocked me that you thought that. There's men out there that, because uh, Ian, you were very like pro condom at the beginning of our relationship, like really wanted to be safe, wanted to be careful. You thought about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Men are, uh, the men that I interacted with, again, not all men, whatever, um, they begged to not use a condom. That like, fucking, this shit blows my yeah. mind. Every time Anissa has told me this, I'm like, uh, what? That's a real thing. <laughs> the blue balls thing, you've never used that uh -huh. excuse I've had a lot of men in my life, in my past, use that excuse. Uh, and the consent thing. And yeah. the um, you're the first guy that I've had in my life that cares about that specifically. Mm -hmm. And it is true that some of them do. There was like this um, one woman who was talking about she was crying in a hospital bed because she had just uh, had like a really traumatic experience. And her partner tried to have sex with her in the room and nurses have talked about this that this is a real problem women who have just given birth who are like clearly in pain their partners they have to kick them out of the room because they're trying to have sex with them right after like giving birth and shit so like it's a thing and your brain doesn't work that way and and the men that you surround yourself with brains mm -hmm. do not work that way so you had this idea that there wasn't a group of men out there like that but there is. Well, I, I I thought in general that was a smaller piece of the pie. Yeah. Like, like you said, because I had a lot of people around me who did not mm -hmm. think that way at all. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there were some okay points that I made in the video, but I think the general idea that this is so ridiculous to inform these guys of like what is enthusiastic consent. Mm -hmm. It's really it is important to do and as childish and as stupid as it might seem to someone like me, mm -hmm. uh, it's apparently needed for some other people. Right. Like yeah. what's common sense to me is not common sense to them. When I was in university, I saw some horrible shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was normalized at frats for sure. Mm -hmm. So it, it's definitely a conversation that still I mean, yeah. The fucking NHL just arrested like seven guys for yeah. like sexual assault of a woman. Um, 
And like that is that didn't shock me Mm -hmm. at all. But I grew up in the sports world and I grew up around that culture. And uh, like, I want to feel like I have to give so many caveats, but like, I am specifically talking about uh, people who are raised in a certain culture who learn to believe that it is normal. And unfortunately, those are young men in typically sports environments. Uh, uh, A lot of like high school, like football teams operate that way. Frats operate that way. And um, it it is a disturbing reality. And it's, uh, you know, I just makes me sad having these conversations because there are a lot of guys out there that are like you, whose brains don't work that way. And they don't interact with, they don't run in those circles. of course. And so they hear this and they're like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't do anything. And it's like, I get, I get it. But like, you have not seen the gaping fucking hole of hell. Yeah. Which is like, even like hockey team etiquette. Mm -hmm. They do it to each other. Yeah. It's not even like they just do it mm-hmm. to women. They do it to each other. Right. And, it, so. and it, it, all this behavior sort of builds on top of itself yeah. and sort of makes you feel even more justified or this is the way the world is. Yeah. It normalizes a lot of the behavior. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it feels bad because I was raised in uh, jock sport culture. Mm-hmm. So what I thought was normal yeah. and what I thought all men were like, which is shitty and horrible, is not the culture that you were raised in. And, and yourself, right? You don't, so yeah. like we can't, you know, I chose to cope with that by hating myself and thinking women were disposable because you, you live in that reality and you're like, well, that must be the way that it is. Mm-hmm. You grew up in a reality where you like consent, you respect women, and uh, you don't have friends that are constantly dehumanizing other men and other women sexually and otherwise so you came from a world where it's like why are we even having these conversations it can't it's not common yeah whereas like my reality was it was super common Mm -hmm. um and obviously there's a there's a middle point um and i i'm really anxious about even talking about this because i feel like the comments are going to be like it makes a lot of sense i i mean like um you know what it it makes me think of uh ian are you uh this is all related are you a good driver like do you do you not get into car yeah. accidents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good driver. Yeah, I've been in, I don't know, maybe, I was in one, like, fender bender in a parking lot. Mm-hmm. Right. When but, I mean, like, you're you're pretty attentive when you drive, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you 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 would say you're a skilled driver. I would. So we should get rid of the driver's test. Right. Mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, I am a good driver. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like, so yeah. why do we have the test? Yeah. yeah. No, it's a good point. That's a great way to... It's mm-hmm. it's very selfish and inward thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well um, said. So maybe if somebody thinks like, oh, why do they have a, a rape quiz? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you quizzing me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to think like y- you're not the only person on earth. There are billions, mm-hmm. you know, and they all have different lived experiences. Yes. Yeah. And I think it does really depress me that it was a shock to me that you cared about how I was feeling during Mm -hmm. like intimate interactions. Yeah. Like that's sad. So, and, and we met when I was like 20, what, 23, 24. I think I had like three boyfriends before you. Yeah, probably. Um, so, you know, and I had a long-term boyfriend Mm -hmm. and you were the first person ever. So, yeah, that's sad. Yeah, it is. But um, again, probably says something about me and my choices of who I was dating as well. Like, I don't want to. Well, know. you always bring up that you were kind of like a, a wild child kind of character when you were a teenager. I was a wild child. I was a pick me. Mm-hmm. And um, I really valued uh, athletes. Yeah. So that was the crowd you ran with. Those yes. were your choices. Yeah. It's not necessarily like that you attract those people. It's just those are the. It's your environment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you were, you know, if you ran with a different crowd, then been you, different. you might have had a much different experience uh, based yeah. on the choices that you had. Yeah. Totally. But it's well, like- and I think it's partially the reason why uh, the people who watched my video about that, or a lot of people watched my video about that, they resonated with what I was saying mm-hmm. because it was like, yeah, what the hell is this about? Mm. It's reaffirming. Like yeah. on the surface, it does kind of reaffirm like 
I, yeah, I'm I'm a good person. Mm-hmm. Like that's as far as it goes. Like mm-hmm. you can just easily just be like, yeah, this is making me feel good about myself. Totally. Yeah, and I guess that's like the video that you made, like addressing all of this. Like this is another example where you just like lived enough life to the point where you were like, I based so much of what I was saying on my personal experience. And I was so confidently wrong about so many things that I, I want to say something. And mm-hmm. I feel the the R quiz one was one of those for you. Totally, yeah. So it's, uh, I don't know, when you're a, a, when you start to realize how many, how bad sexual abuse is and how often people have mm-hmm. dealt with it, it's kind of hard to like die on that hill. Yeah, totally. And like, I don't know, even just thinking about certain, thinking about how everyone, not everyone, but most people will be in some sort of relationship, Mm -hmm. intimate relationship in their life. Mm -hmm. Like this is already just like an innate, a common thing. Mm -hmm. So you can't write it off. Like you could almost write off something like car accidents or a, a driver's test or something even easier than this because not everyone drives. Yeah. Some people can spend their whole fucking life, depending on where you live, not driving, not ever uh, interacting in that way. Mm -hmm. But with something like this, it's like, oh, yeah, that this is like, you know, even like it's got to be even if it's not even if it doesn't feel super common to you personally, like you have to question it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's something everybody, I mean, just talking about healthy relationships and stuff isn't mm-hmm. something that any of us. No. I had no clue how unhealthy my relationships were when I was in junior high and high school. Mm-hmm. No one told me what I should be looking out for. Yeah. I, and I will say as well, like, there is, when I was younger, there was this vibe of like, well, it should be like fucking obvious when someone is like into you mm-hmm. or like giving you signs or signals to like move forward with uh, whether it be like a sexual thing or just getting intimate in general. And I, I think it was really only after, not only after, but after watching uh, Love on the Spectrum, did it give me like an even clearer idea of how like some of these interactions should be going. There's like a plethora of things that we should be asking consent for. Yeah. That we don't. Yeah. And we definitely need to like uh, remedy that. It's really interesting because I think the reason why I love on the spectrum, it, it it's so blaring mm-hmm. is because the parents make an active like decision when they're young, clearly mm-hmm. to communicate what is healthy and normal respect and consent when interacting with other people. They they go, oh, I can't assume that you will innately know these things, so I will walk you through healthy and good behavior. But for some reason, people look at their allistic children, they're like mm-hmm. neurotypical children, and they they think that they don't need to like teach them right. how to have healthy it's, interactions. Yeah, I don't know what the term is. It might be low or high context culture, but yeah. it's something to do with like, there's just so many, like, there are too many things where it's like, you need to understand the implication. Yeah. Or what, yeah, what is being Im- impl- implied yeah. in these certain scenarios? And that will, that will be the thing that, like, prepares you for life. Yeah. But it's like, that isn't. It's like not enough. Like, it it tells you that people are that way, but it, it it's not a good it way to be. tell you, like how to navigate the situation, how to like remedy what's going on, how to uh, build upon the information that you're getting mm-hmm. in a way that is uh, um, healthy and helpful for both parties. Like you learning what something means based on like experience mm-hmm. without extra context is a very dangerous way to like Race. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, the whole idea of like avoiding these, uh, like essentially saying how you're feeling mm-hmm. and asking for con- uh, for consent and all these types of things that maybe an autistic person would be taught, mm-hmm. hopefully if they have good parents, mm-hmm. um, uh, or that everyone should be taught. The only downside is that you risk looking uncool yeah. to some holistic people. Yeah. Like, is yeah. that kind of the, is that pretty much it? I think, like, um, movies really 
did it in, you know, like movies really made it seem like the guy's got to you got to right. go in for the kiss. Because that's gotta, what I like, imagine. Yeah. When I was growing up and yeah. I was kind of getting into the dating scene, it was just like a lot of like, I'm nervous to ask for fucking anything yeah because it's weird yeah right when you watch movies romantically the guy just goes in for the he just knows when it's right Uh and like even that like standard that has been set in media like no kid wants to be uncool they want to be like the guy that like kisses the girl when it's like romantic and if you guess wrong yeah like that's it's just so it's lame yeah it's lame uh Man, I'm so nervous for this episode. Oh, I don't think you should be nervous. <laughs> I mean, it's good stuff. It's we'd eventually get to it. Yeah, I think it's a heavier it's... topic, but I don't think anybody's gonna no. complain about serious topics. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Whatever. Um, I do want to say something though about um, when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I will say, like my, I mean, this is maybe TMI or mm-hmm. people don't care. My sex drive was like. Th- 3,000% higher than it is now. Mm. Um, and I think it's just like hormonal. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to like make excuses or even try and understand why people do like horrendous acts of sexual assault or whatever. But um, I do think that when you're young, like that urge, especially as a man, I don't know how, I, well, I don't know, especially as a man, but I've only lived, lived as a man, so mm-hmm. I can only speak from that perspective. But mm-hmm. it's so insanely powerful that it really is like being under the influence Mm -hmm. and it sucks. It's the same for women. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very, um, uh, annoying because it can get you into horrible trouble that can be life ruining. Mm -hmm. And I will say that if you are young and you're experiencing that and you're like worried about it, (laughs) it's like you get into these situations where you're just like, I need to, you know, I need to do something about this. And then afterwards you're like, wow, I was insane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like in my experience that doesn't go away, but it goes down to a manageable amount (laughs) to where uh, in your thirties and onward, it gets a lot easier to like be conscientious about it. If that makes sense. Do you feel that that's been your experience, Ian? I think I do agree with that to an extent. Yeah. Cause it, 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 you're right. You know, the the like the sex drive has gone down over time for sure yeah it um, doesn't go away but yeah. it does become manageable it's hard though you know because, what i mean yeah i don't know how much um thinking is also going on and just being <laughs> proactive about like i don't know my yeah. <laughs> thoughts and like just yeah i think that's the di- like so something that really makes me sad is like it's really normalized to talk about like the hormonal things that are going on in men and how there's like these impulses like for women I mean when I went through puberty it was fucking it was yeah you're horny as shit right you're horny as shit and you're making really bad choices I think actually uh pen 15 did a really good episode uh, on that she discovers masturbation Mm. the main character and she's obsessed like she can't she (laughs) can't like stop masturbating it changes your life it really does like as a young person you're just like this is all I'm gonna do now and that's what's like a meme like uh, Mm -hmm. teenagers are always jerking off it's like a fixation but it's only discussed with men but I think the difference is like you said it's the thinking I think women are so heavily conditioned to think about others and how they're conducting themselves and how like they're fucking up basically all the time that like I I do think that like they hide it more Mm -hmm. and it um it is like in the fourth forefront of their mind of like how will this look how like am I like being shameful like all these things it's so heavily ingrained where as like men it's almost like like a cute little thing. Yeah, that's just how they that that's just how right. they is. It's just how they are. Yeah. What and, you, oh, go ahead. No, 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 you can ask. Uh, how do you interpret uh th- like uh some of these po- post nut clarity uh, <laughs> comments from like Joe Rogan's and I think shit. that's true. Yeah. Uh, it's the true for women as well. Right, right. That's There's what been I was times bringing where, it up cuz I'm like surely like that's for a, sure. Like I, if your horny disappears after you've busted. Yes. <laughs> you I I this is probably TMI for me, but especially when I was younger, if I would watch porn, instant closing the tab, 
intense, intense, like, disgust or, and, yeah. and guilt. Okay. Be, especially because women don't watch porn. Right, right. right. Like, none of my friends talked point, about it. Actually. And, and I found out later on uh-huh. that they were, but no women talk about it. They right. don't talk about it with each other. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, my male friends, they would watch porn together. Like, <laughs> like it was, like, such a thing that, like, it was so normalized, right? So, um, but it is true that, like, mm-hmm. The clarity thing. I don't know if it's just like you. Yeah, you you get over mm-hmm. what you're focused on, right? And then you can go back to right. But they're gonna like. I don't know. I think some people would say that this is like a forever thing, mm. where it's like, yeah, you're maybe a little hornier when you're like younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, there's this intense feeling that you have that, like, you know, I mean, it I affects don't agree all with your that, decisions. But and. Uh, I don't know how testosterone, like, I know testosterone yeah. ha- is its own animal, and that's where, man, the, yeah. <laughs> it's so difficult because when people talk about this shit, it's so understudied, and a lot of it is, like, right. a, a pseudoscience. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it's, like, really difficult to, like, even know what's true or not. But from my experience, having, you know, mm-hmm. higher estrogen than testosterone in my body, um, I, once I got over probably... 18 mm-hmm. i it wasn't even i i literally could go my whole life without sex now right and i don't care so i don't know what that is i don't know if it's like hormonally i whatever but like i i like sex but mm-hmm. i don't i wouldn't i never have like an impulse anymore where i'm like i need to right go take care of this right now mm. um and i i don't know what that means yeah to be yeah honest. That's very relatable. I I wouldn't say it's to that degree for me, Mm -hmm. but it is like, you know, considerably less of a problem. Yeah. And I don't know if it's responsible to say like, if you're in that position now, if you're like in your early 20s or late teens and you're like, this is a problem because that's how I kind of viewed it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, why is this always happening? Like, uh... Ian, did you ever, like, get a boner in class? Oh, yeah. Sucks. Many a time. I felt bad for the boys because of that. You have to hide your hide boner. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, men can. You know, and um, I don't think I, I, that's literally never happened to me in, like, the last, like, five or six years. I, I can't even remember the last time that uh, I had an accidental me. boner. Yeah, Ian you know gets what I mean? accidental boners all the time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, But it's because he'll, yeah. like, look at my ass or something. Uh, so, yeah, he, yeah, you probably have more I visual <laughs> stimulation than I do around the house. <laughs> no, no. Well, no, uh, but even I, at the gym, he'll, like, look at my ass, and I'm like, why are you doing that right now? Because that's not going to end well for you. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, all, right, I mean, right. also, sometimes it's not even, like, that visual or specific. Yeah. Like, I, I call it like my tired, tired boner, boner. <laughs> where like if I'm like kind of overtired or whatever and yeah. I've been up and I've been grinding, drinking monster. Usually I think I need a couple monsters in me or something like that. No, you, yeah, uh, no. maybe a Red give Bull. Me, give me a couple monsters and you'll see the monster. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's a weird one where I'll just kind of be just a little bit late, just a little bit past my bedtime. Yeah. Mm. And all of a sudden I'm just... Fucking, yeah, really that horny. Seems re- that seems routine based more than accidental. No, no, because it's not every time at that time. Right, but it's, it's weird just, that it is at that time, mm. right? Well, I shouldn't say a few. I shouldn't say a few hours past my bedtime. I'll say like, like okay, let's say this in a twenty-four hour stream. <laughs> yeah, he's getting a boner on <laughs> yeah <laughs> on hour seventeen. Right. Yeah. I'll probably have a bone dog. Yeah, I'm saying that that <laughs> bone dog that yeah. doesn't That's constitute as person. as the same random boner that t- teenagers got, like in public, where it was just like you think about a butt for two seconds. <laughs> think about a butt. And, oh, true. And then you true. have uh, you have a four hour erection that you need to see true. a doctor about. Yeah. Man, fuck! I even thinking Wait, about being a, a teenager. See a doctor for f- your four-hour <laughs> erection. That's what they always say in the commercials. Hours. Yeah. Was it know, eight in hours? the commercials, like oh, if you have an erection for, for four, like, for more than four, yeah, yeah, they're oh, like, okay. if you have an erection for four hours, go see a doctor. And I'm like, uh, and people always make jokes about that. Hey, if I have an erection for four hours, I'm not going to a doctor. I'm yeah, going to a brothel. <laughs> I would say probably twelve to fourteen was the worst, where it was like obsessive. Okay. That makes sense. And then it like decreased slowly over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I. I know there's probably going to be somebody who actually understands endocrine and like can like 
actually I That's so what when the I comments was, are for, baby. When I was growing up <laughs> in my basic bio class, we were told, and I don't again, I fucking don't keep up with this. Say shit. it with your chest. <laughs> we were told that uh testosterone causes sex drive in males, but women don't have testosterone, so it's their adrenal glands mm. that cause them to get aroused. So I don't Women right. don't have testosterone? I thought they had they like do. a small amount. They oh, okay, okay. I have testosterone, but I was simplifying it because right. when you're a kid, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Women do have testosterone. Uh, men have estrogen. We all have different levels. Um, but uh, that's the claim, right? Look at this liberal trying to say that men have estrogen. But I don't the, – the weird thing <laughs> is, is like I, I – and I am so uneducated on this topic that it's hard for me to like suss it out. Yeah. But like – I, all I know is I definitely didn't have a lot of estrogen in my system uh, as a uh, young girl. And also, I think it's when you're on your period, you have the highest level of testosterone. And I'm telling you, when I was on my period, I was definitely not horny ever. So something sus. That's all I'm saying. Anecdotally, right. some sus. <laughs> anecdotally <laughs> you got some other things to worry about when you're on your period yeah you can make an educated guess and I, I do think that it's like from person to person how these chemicals affect them is yeah, very different which is true. why my experience is very different from Ian's experience is very different from your experience yeah so, um, and I, everybody's yeah, got yeah. different cocktails going on in there like For everybody's sure. estrogen levels is different everybody's testosterone levels is different yeah so I don't know um, I think that's a good note to end that segment on yeah. yeah, we've been talking I about it for the majority of the podcast. We should yeah. talk about something else so you can put something in the thumbnail. Yes, well. Because <laughs> what are you going to title this episode? We talk about sex the entire yeah. episode. Yeah. No, sex the episode. topic I want to talk about, uh, the big topic for this episode is AI art. The Ooh. Videos, the AI videos that the are AI videos. Fuck. Now. I have a lot of words. What? You do? Yeah, this is a subject that I'm I'm relatively passionate about. Nice. Honest. I love that. Uh, I will give my quick uh, scoop. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about, like, this is the worst thing ever. Yep. I've heard a lot of people talking about, no, actually, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, well. Those are the only two opinions that someone can ever have on the internet, by the way. <laughs> That's it's true. either very bad or very good. I also will extend that even further and say, that's the only two opinions you can have on AI, period. <laughs> well, yeah, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so I just want to give an example of like these two different thought processes. One person on Twitter says, I think AI should be banned in its entirety at this point because right now we just hit the point of no return. This is the worst it's ever going to look, and I am horrified at where we'll go from here on. <laughs> what an interesting way to say that. Yeah. Uh, we should ban it. Because we are unable to ban it. <laughs> if we're past the point of no return, doesn't that mean that we can't do anything about it? What if, this is hypothetical, I'm not wishing this on anyone, ever, hypothetical completely, but what if we put a bullet in the brains of anyone that has ever contributed to AI and then burned and smashed all the hard drives <laughs> that ever existed? Oh my God. All right, Ethan. <laughs> all right, Joker. <laughs> Would that get rid of the problem? I'm just asking. I'm just asking okay. questions. I'm just starting a conversation. Hey, okay. I'm just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> true, true. Great point. That was uh, fucking evil. But yeah, you're you're probably right. Um, <laughs> now this person quote tweeted that and said, "This is a person who has the opinion that AI is good, okay. brilliant, amazing." Yeah. Stop with the fear mongering. Y'all cannot see the bigger picture. Trust AI is going to improve our lives drastically. <laughs> I'm so passionate and positive about this that I think I'm going to dedicate all content I make around educating people all about AI and how it will positively affect us. May I ask, uh -huh. what on God's green earth can po like can be positive from this? I don't understand. Everybody's talking about all okay. the po the possibilities. What possibilities? I will list some things. Okay. Now, I think it's important to note that I'm way closer to the first person's uh, opinion. I think, well, I shouldn't even necessarily say that. The This person, the one I just read, they have a very, like, idealistic view of this. 
yeah. where it's like if we currently aren't like enslaved by capitalism and the guy at the top isn't going to fucking fire the entire staff of his production company and replace it with a couple of people who know how to write prompts in AI. Mm -hmm. Like if, if that wasn't a thing and everyone was just using it as a value add for their job that exists already. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of like helps bolster things. And people were like still as artistic as they could be still as like thinking critically as they could. Then I see where he's coming from if all of those things are like followed well wait before we even like, so where i'm coming from is mm -hmm. there's already this problem of if you are a person who has uploaded or a baby even mm -hmm. yeah. who has uploaded your photo online right that will be used to train people will uh -huh. make sexual content possibly with your face yeah that happens now yeah so like this, mm -hmm. like I'm not even talking about the business. Like totally. I just, w we are already having problems mm -hmm. with. There was a somebody who was talking about she uploaded a photo of herself in a bikini, mm -hmm. and AI somebody put an AI and just shot out an image of her naked. Right. Um. So, what? How that if that's happening, it's just going to get way worse with the video. Shit. Oh, of course. Yeah, all of those problems that exist are still going to exist. Yeah. So like. I, I was strictly addressing like any like hypo like we're clearly I'm ignoring right, all of the, the negative and talking about the possible super positive. fucked up aspects of it that right. still have not been addressed even slightly. Yeah. Like okay. there's no laws in effect right now. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. There's a bunch of businesses that are making like AI porn mm -hmm. and all of these things like they're making boatloads of money off of people's likeness yeah. right now. Yeah. Like that is obviously fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um I would say that the the avenue I'm going down is almost basically like ignoring that for the sake of the argument that these other people are making okay. of yeah. like AI's good. It's this is actually uh you know gonna save us well yeah exactly because the argument i think a lot of the time is less work for people right that when has it, when it uh, right, in right, the right, history right. of anything right, right, right. has innovation I know. ever made I less know. work for humans i hear you <laughs> i hear like you industrial ya. revolution i hear you i'm okay that is the argument i think that uh, obviously, you know, like, you know, if you want to like cite some jobs that were, I don't know, taken away by, uh, technology, it's a lot of like, I don't know, hyper specific things mm -hmm. right now. It's like, I looked it up. It was like, uh, elevator operator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's one called a pin boy. Did you see the, um. Taco Bell, I think, that has like an AI person who like oh, takes your no. order and it like fucks up all the time. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I want to get a fucking AI Taco Bell order. <laughs> I mean, we already have a version of this. Whenever you call any place for customer service, mm. so annoying. You have to immediately go, agent, agent, yeah. right. agent, get me to a person. I don't want to talk to the robots. So yeah. annoying. Um, that's been going on for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, true. Sucks. And that's not going to be very much different. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Taco Bell, for an example, they're going to have that. And then people are going to be like, can you have the option to say, I want to talk to a person? You know what I mean? Very yeah. similar to that. And then everybody's just going to do the person option. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. Because it's just easier. Yeah. Um, What was I talking about? I'm oh, sorry for derailing you. Oh, I just no, want to be a shoe fault. cobbler. That's all I care about. Yeah, but uh, okay, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> the AI like, is going to cobble the shoe. <laughs> I think in this idealistic scenario, like we have to like acknowledge that we like it when technology replaces jobs that we deem as a society as shittier, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Yeah. Or dangerous, even. Like, if we could replace uh, the crab fishermen on the Deadly's Catch yeah. with some robots, like, guess... we'd probably be okay with that. Maybe not straight away. There's probably some passionate crab fishermen out there who want to keep grinding. Yeah. Because that's what makes it, like, 
That's what makes you. That's what life is. That's what put salt, the, s- salt in your in boots. your britches. In your britches. <laughs> salt in your britches. There's a uh-huh. salt in my boot. Yeah. But I think you have to like look at history, mm-hmm. and also look at what capitalism is. Yes. Which is like making the most money uh-huh. and utilizing mm-hmm. and labor, everyone is still working and everyone is still but working this is what, what i'm like the what i'm drawing the line for i'm like trying to draw a line for the people who think ai is saving the day and making people's lives and jobs easier mm-hmm. it's making like the people who are making it it's making their pockets uh, thicker thicker and Deeper and full of shit. Um, <laughs> full of shit. And uh, like, it's like it, it. It isn't going to play out how they're imagining it to play out. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to, I don't know, like make that a little bit more obvious by going through the different routes. No, yeah, like obviously, uh, I think like people talking about like. With with the with the video stuff right now, they're talking about movies. They're talking about animation. They're talking about all these jobs that, to be honest, I think we consider these jobs to be the most like creative and fun and rewarding jobs. Mm-hmm. And we obviously you want you actually don't want those jobs to disappear because that's what everyone is striving to do is mm-hmm. some version of like creativity art experience i feel fulfilled blah 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 yep we want the things like changing the plumbing in our house to be replaced Mm. etc etc all the bullshit ones scooping ice cream we want that to be replaced Mm. Uh, and we'd be okay generally with that i think the reason that people are freaking out and they're acting as if this is like soul crushing shit is because the a lot of these jobs are the literal dreams of people yes and i think that's what makes it like truly scary for a lot of people because these jobs are being replaced and that like discussion that we had like a decade ago with mm-hmm. like andrew yang about like universal basic income like that's not even a discussion anymore uh, but it kind of needs to be with basically saying like anything that is going to be fulfilling, we're going to replace that as a job and we're going to give you some fucking weird ass other option or no option at all, mm-hmm. which is, you know, obviously the the very far future thing, which is like we don't have we just need to, you know, pay for people to live. Yeah, I think human beings need to create to be happy like all of us have. What you know, whatever that means for you, there was that one French asshole, the philosopher. I think he was French. It was like talking about how like work is good, but you need leisure time to like be fulfilled and be happy to mm-hmm. create, to have time to create right. and whatever. Can't remember who he was. Some guy, some some white guy, some bro, but, some bro. Um, but uh, I really do believe that, and I believe that like um, that paired with community is what will make life tolerable for a lot of people and people who work on big projects like DreamWorks or Mm -hmm. recently has been hotel. I'm sure those people feel extremely fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And the idea that like we're taking away that thing for so many people, it is scary. Yeah. Um, Cause like I'm happiest when I'm here with you and Dane talking about like, what are we going to cook up? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we need that. And I'm and I, I am scared that like there's going to be a day where like there's going to be fucking Quebel Cop AI content <laughs> only. Yeah. Quebel Cop goes to his AI girlfriend to. Right. Steak. And I guess for all the people who are saying you guys don't need to worry about AI like, uh, you know, your jobs and the creative jobs out there, they're not going to disappear. Right. They're going to say something like that. Mm. And it's like, yeah, we're not afraid that creative jobs are going to disappear. We know that not ever, not everyone is going to be replaced with AI. Mm. Like we know that that's not the case. Like, um, well, at least right now. And I mean, who knows how long, but, uh, it's still like, there's always, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, like we're, we're naturally going to put more value into things created by people. Mm -hmm. I think that is maybe, I mean, I feel pretty confident that that will happen. Mm. Um, 
it'll be like a more kind of like the difference between like getting Wish products or Amazon Basic or Timu shit mm -hmm. uh, and getting something built like locally handmade by some craftsman fucker. It's like, yeah. you know, if you have the money to like buy that and you like long lasting good products, like you're going to spend for the local That's guy. That's the fear that I have, though, mm -hmm. is that. With AI and shit, if everything becomes so cheap that they can justify never upping um, the the money that they're paying people, mm -hmm. the minimum wage, and right. just on average what people are being paid, nobody will be able to afford. Like they're going to justify right, the keeping things. it down because right. they've cheapened right. all of these things, the slop. It's a very slow like – uh, walk to death. Yeah, that's like, what it feels with like. With everyone. Because like the – we're going to have – it feels like – like the options you'll have less options yeah. it feels like where it's like and less options in your budget the, yeah that's that's the fear mm -hmm. at least for me um and because there'll be less options in people's budget when it's already so hard here's a really good example game devs mm -hmm. it's very hard to take that risk and and spend that much time money resources collaborating mm -hmm. on something that you don't even know if people are going to buy right <laughs> That's going to become even less of a thing for you to be able to risk, like, doing a creative mm -hmm. collab in that way uh, without using AI. Right. And if you choose to not do that, you're taking a bigger risk. Right. Then, and, mm -hmm. and it will have to be a more expensive game. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to be able to afford it. Like, yeah. that's, there's just so much. Like, I can imagine a world where, like, $60 games will sound mm -hmm. insane. Because people will make AI generated games that take them like way less time mm -hmm. and they'll be like, oh, yeah, three dollar game. Mm -hmm. And so like somebody who's passionate about making games makes a game and they yeah. price it at sixty dollars because that's, you know, what they need to price it at. And nobody's everybody's like, what? Sixty yeah. dollars. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like that's the world that I'm afraid we're going to be in personally. Right. Uh, I have more thoughts on this, but I want to get Dane's input. Um, well, I'm the most passionate about the AI art stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I, I mean, as far as it goes with like, um, how it's going to affect like the economy and, and all that crap, my best guess and my most optimistic guess is that it'll do what you said that it, ho that people hope it will do, which is like replace all of the like shit that people don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and that'll make it so that you know, those jobs are eliminated. But as a result, in order for capitalism to work, like the UBI thing has to happen, yeah. you know? And so AI forcing that mm -hmm. feels good. Mm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like, it feels like a net positive. But even though we'll lose, like people will lose jobs. Isn't it scary obviously. though that it might, some bad things might have to happen before we actually get that into like written into effect. Yeah, I mean, like I've said this before, we live in the fucking wild wild west right now. So like things are going to be bad before things get good. Like there's going to be a lawlessness on this shit for a while before people actually start to regulate it and like yeah. understand what to do with it. Um, that is just what happens whenever like a huge it's so, technology comes into yeah. a being. You know, this um, shit's gonna make me so paranoid. Well, I mean, you're way? you're already pretty paranoid, yeah. right? <laughs> but I don't it'll think just I'm like that paranoid. Well, I know, but it'll but it'll it'll uh, extradite it. Yeah, well, like because th it's gonna get to a point. I know where my brain, especially because I'm susceptible to this type of stuff, where like I'm gonna see a video, right? And I'm gonna be like, yeah, what the fuck? Or I, I'm you gonna, can tell. Be, well, now you can, but maybe five years down the road, my brain's gonna start fucking cooking yeah i will like, say now you can't even tell depending on how you're consuming the information mm. if you're casually scrolling on twitter and you're not really like paying attention we, it's like already can. low shitty quality yeah like and you just cut out the parts that are not believable and and i'm you're, gullible you're as shit. Golden. i'm so stupid i saw this video <laughs> of a, a orangutan pissing in its own mouth oh i saw then, that one and then somebody was like this is ai generated and i was like yeah could it i don't know sure i i didn't know whether or not to, <laughs> I didn't know if it was a joke i still don't know oh, that's so awesome i remember seeing that orangutan pissing in its mouth and i was like oh that's a good joke is that real yeah. Or AI generated. That's real. It's real. Why would someone AI generate that? 
<laughs> well, in fairness, Dan, I saw an AI generated one of like, like people are just using it as like a cheap joke now. It's like, uh-huh. like jokes that would not be worth it in the past are now like very much worth it because it takes, you know. I like I, the a little thing bit is, of computing power. My favorite thing about AI images is that th- how creative people are in coming up with the concepts. So even the best part of AI art are the people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm telling you, if I have a bad mental health month five years in the future, <laughs> I would not put it past me to start thinking that everything that I've consumed for the past five years has been fake and AI generated and I have no way of knowing. Oh no, this is your road to schizophrenia. I'm telling you, (laughs) I, I, and I think there's a lot of people that are like, cause unfortunately, like I do have some obsessive compulsive tendencies and I do get hung up on concepts and ideas and I could see a really bad month or a bad couple months or like, I just, I worry about people having frequent mental health. No, it's definitely going to cause a lot of people to have psychotic breaks. Yeah. Uh, But that's a, you know, we can group that in with the, you know, bad things that are going to happen before things get better. I think that when, you know, because I mean, didn't they like outlaw like revenge porn like five years ago or something like that? Uh, It's been outlawed in the States for quite a while. Yeah. But in, Italy, I found out they only recently done didn't do it. Yeah, they well, anyway, that's just an it. example of like of you saying like, oh, they're making AI porn images of people like that's 100 percent going to get outlawed at some point. Like they're just going to completely make it illegal. Um, it's like, not illegal you, now, which sucks, but it will be. With you know like what I mean? VPNs and shit. Oh, I'm saying people are still going to do illegal things. I'm just saying they're going to make it illegal. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to try and regulate it. Yeah. Um, it's going to happen. Um, but like I said before, I'm much more po- uh, passionate about the AI, AI art stuff because I just think like full stop, 100%. I, I just believe that you cannot replace artists with AI. You can't do it. And I know that you said that you're not worried that it's going to replace them. I think that... At best, it's going to add a new, like, we're going to get a new aesthetic. (laughs) We're going to get a new um, way of making art, but it's just going to be added on top of what we already have. It's not going to be replacing any of it. And people who actually understand and love art are not going to engage with AI art. They're just not going to consume it. They're going to consume yeah. Regular art. And so if you're worried that you're going to get, like, pushed out, like it's only going to be because the pie is growing and your slice might get smaller as a result. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's not going to replace it. Um, and I think that that's like the main fear that a lot of people have. Really. I like that perspective. I think that's very believable. Um, I'm a hater. Yeah. Oh, I mean, for good reason. <laughs> There's a lot of things to hate. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't think that it's like fun. I think, I think <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm one of like... I want, I want to uh, to just make a make a farm <laughs> with a goat and a cow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, you can do that with AI. It's just a prompt away. No, I think I'm just a little sad that like I'll never know what it's like. The feel of a goat's hose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never know what it's like to wake up and your world is only as big as the 20 people that live in your village. And like, yeah, I mean, we I don't know if this is a special time. We're getting close to the end, by the way. But yeah, uh, it it does feel very weird. The time that we're growing up in. I'm scared mm-hmm. um, because, it's man, the shift has been so fucking Whiplash. obnoxious. Yeah. It's hard. Like the social media shit, being online, period. Facebook and now we're was into a hard this. Time. Yeah. Maybe there'll be some other, some additional blessings that come with the uh, AI art movement. We're on, we're definitely, I think that right now we're in a, like, a valley mm. and we're about to hit a, like, spike. Does that make sense? Like, life is bad now. But it's going to get better. <laughs> I think I just need to, like, join a pottery class or something. Sure. I mean, like, I think that that is very good idea because uh, right now is the best time to cope. Yeah. You know? I, it just Coping I, is in. 
Man, we need community more than ever. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Community is so insanely powerful. Which it's OP. Which is why we love the Chuggalos. Yes. Chuggalo yes, army. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you want more of this Root and Tootin action, head on over. If you want to hear Ian Tootin, head on over to the Patreon. To the Patreon. We talk at length, if you can believe that. Wow. Yeah, can you believe us talking at length? I can't even imagine that. On miscellaneous topics? I didn't even scrape half of the topics. Uh, go subscribe to the Patreon. Thank you so much, Chuggalo Army. Go Chuggalos. Hasta. La vista. Baby. Baby.